often. I have to tell you, uh, this kind of reaction, I'm trying to remember the last time when I heard this kind of reaction We're to all you. skaters. No, no, not, not, this, not just these people, but the people at the uh, meeting this morning, the people in the building who talked to me that knew you were coming. I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying to find the word. It's scary. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it's more than adoration. It's admiration. It is, it is just, they love you. It's not that they like you. They, the people of this country absolutely are in love with you. Well, it's no, a, do I yeah, do I don't know. It is. It's an amazing reaction. I was looking through, um, this is a book about you, which has some really n interesting information in here, some interesting things about skating and skaters that I didn't know, um, and a nice story about a man named, named Walter. Walter. Yeah. yeah I, thought I met him here. Um, quickly, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, I was skating Christmas time um, down Nathan Phillips Square, and I wasn't living here at the time, so How that, was, long that was a big deal. This? It was three years ago. Okay. And uh, there was one guy on the ice, and he must have been 75 close to 80 years old. He had the cap on. He had a very European look. You know how European guys can layer things and they look good? He was, he looked so good. He had a, um, a pipe and um, he skated with his hands out. And he was a beautiful skater. And there must have been so much history. I finally walked up to him and talked to him and I learned he, he was teaching me not to put my hands in my pockets in case I fell and, and not watch for twigs on the ice. And, and just, um, it was really the essence of what, of why we all love to skate. He had it. And Did then, he know who you were? No. Oh, I oh, told him wonderful. afterwards. I told him every Friday Aww. he could teach me how to skate. But he had what you what you uh, love about skating. For you, it is, it's an art form. It's the love. I mean, the, the absolute essence of this for you is the, the art form, the love of the art if form. If you're lucky. Like, you, if you can get on the ice and, uh, and, and hold that for about four minutes and make everyone be a part of it, then that's what's so fun about it. You remember your first pair of skates? <laughs> he, he painted them blue. I don't know why. So. I didn't mind giving you. Yeah, he did. did you Sorry, fall, Wade. Yeah. Did you fall in love with it back then? I know that at one point you made a choice between, between hockey, hockey and this, but, and but did you have this great love, this thrill? Can I tell the truth? The thrill. Yeah, the, the thrill. The thrill. <laughs> I didn't. I was in love with everything I was doing. Like, I wasn't really... I didn't pin skaters up on the wall. I didn't <laughs> think and, and uh, eat figure skating at all. I just sort of was doing whatever I did at the time. It just was the one thing that I was the best at and the one thing that stuck with me. But how does a guy get into figure skating? I know that you were playing hockey Slo as a kid. Slowly. Yeah, well, I mean, no, when you're out there playing hockey, yeah. how does... In a town of 500 people, like Carolina, Alberta, that's, you know, so there's like one paved road and yeah. watch for chickens and stuff. So we, uh, when we had the ice, we had, we had things like a Chinook would come, we'd lose the ice. So to learn how to skate, we got like two or three months of ice time every winter. It was, it was hard. So all of us were in figure skating. Because oh, we didn't care what it was called. It could have been called, you know, upside down pancakes. We right. would have been on the ice skating. Right. And, Whatever uh, else, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. And uh, I just never got off. There, you also talk in the book by giving it all the yeah, mistakes you, you know, can make. Yeah, you should have studied before the <laughs> short program. Where is that? Uh, it's page 112. Well, you talk about... You talk about power. You said you, you made one basic mistake where you used too much power. Sure. A lot of kids, uh, and I watch, you try so hard that you, you push yourself off your center of balance. That's the basic mistake, fundamental error. There's lots. Yeah. Uh, you need a long show. But um, yeah, I, I like working with kids, and, and it's really fun to, to pick something up that they don't realize they're doing. And it's so easy to change and then to watch their face light up when they land a jump for the first time. It's kind of cool. In a competition, you, you were talking about one time I was reading in the Worlds where you, you, in, you used for you to think. And in the middle of a jump, you lose your concentration. Your legs go like rubber and everything falls apart. It doesn't seem to me that there's that much time no, for all that to happen, and yet it does. You can, um, a lot of skaters treat jumps differently, but I've always had a feeling with my jumps, and, and even though a big, a huge jump is 0.8 seconds. That's, that's, that's Point monstrous. 0.8 seconds. Yeah. yeah. 0.5 seconds is like your normal double axle jump. You know, the quad toe is like 0.75, 0 0.8 seconds. It's over that. <laughs> so there isn't so, any, there but you, isn't you time. actually have time. You, it's more of a feeling. Like it, right. it, um, I got great lift on that jump. I'm going to have to check even harder because I'm higher than I usually am. Or um, I've delayed this jump too much. I better pull in faster. Um, all of that all in 0.75. Yeah. Yeah. In that, you know yeah, how sometimes... I can't some remember where I put my wallet, but I can't <laughs> that. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's crazy. Do things slow down? You know how sometimes in life, just I don't know if you've ever had the unfortunate experience of being in a car accident that I was and, just going to say a car accident. Down? I always get... Yeah, we, um, we, uh, especially if a jump doesn't go well, then it becomes a car accident. Then you, then you reanalyze it over and over and over, and you go, 
what did I do wrong? Well, it's like that. It's done. You've made a mistake, and, and you're on the ice. So, but then you have to do the interview. What went wrong? And then they want you to talk they, for three minutes about 0.8 seconds. I know, and then you have what you call instant wisdom, which is, yeah, they, okay. Well, I know exactly, exactly what I did wrong, and it was this and that and the other thing. If, as soon as you land the jump, you don't care. You forget about it. Yeah, you have to just let it go. Do you watch, I mean, you go back and watch your great performances? Do you go back and watch the, the bad ones? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Once. Just, <laughs> no, just once. We watch the great ones a lot, yeah, you know, okay. over and over. Let's put the rewind button. Got but, the good uh, reel and yeah. the B reel. That's right. We don't yeah, look the at the B ones. reel very often. I don't understand, I guess I do in a way, but it's difficult for me to really appreciate or, or understand how Olympic competition or competition that all comes down to t years and years of working hard to having a Oops. good day. Well, having a good day. I mean, yeah. if, if I took the number of days I have bad days here and had to pin a, a gold medal or go into competition, I mean, it's just, it's such a bizarre thing where everything comes down to one one little, one little That's moment. That's why it's so one, exciting, though. Um, yeah. You know, the whole world is in one place at one time. I mean, I know whenever, I've been to three Olympics, and each time I'm at the Olympics, it seems like there, there's nothing else. There's no news. There's no, you know, war somewhere. There's just the Olympics. There's just and when it comes world. down to your little moment, yeah. um, it's just worse when it doesn't. You're just as low. Do you have that feeling when you go out on the ice, say, and uh, wherever you are, you go, gee, you like this rink, you like this yes. ice, you like this place? Did you like Little Hammer? Yeah, I like these people. You like these yeah, people? That's, <laughs> right. that's like, um, that's a tough audience, eh? Yeah, these are tough, yeah. yeah right I didn't know your family was this big. I didn't know you had so many cousins. <laughs> no, but when you go, did Al you... Well, Albertville Olympics, yeah. um, often it was but very unfriendly. But Lillehammer was like wooden and, and warm and, uh, and the shape of the bowl made the people seem close to you. I liked it. You can't obviously talk about Lillehammer without uh, discussing the men's technical or the short program where you had that awful fall and everybody's hearts kind of went out to you. Yeah. Yeah. I can do it. You can do it? <laughs> I don't know if you want to look to your left, but it's over there in the screen. Here, here it comes. Go. Here we go. We're going to take a look at the tape. Maybe you can't explain in 0.75 seconds. I blew it right here. Yeah. And, uh... Da -da 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 oh. And what happened that. is I was just a little too loose. A little too... Just like a little you, too loose. Yeah, you really, you really shouldn't expect it to be easy out there. You should fight for it each Two major moment. deductions to follow. And, uh... Full oh. the but um, but what happens is, is it? Um, I felt so good out there. I really did that. I think I just got a little lazy, and it doesn't take much. It was did a good jump. And I didn't do too much wrong. But did you know when you were landing? Would you, like you said before earlier, all this. Did you know when you were landing? Did you go? Oh, ow. no. Actually, I thought I had it. But when it comes time to end the jump, I mean, at the Olympics, you should really make sure. Yeah. And I think I just came out kind of. I was ready for the next move and fell. And you said you were sorry. Do you really, do you, you apologize to the country? I, I mean, do you really feel that burden that we, I mean, it's, um, that's the bad of it all or the other side of it's it? It's the great and the bad of it. It's nice to be chosen to go, but it, I think it is a responsibility. And it's the, the Olympics and the Worlds are so different. They really are. It's the How same. Are they so when you're different? on the ice, it's the same. Yeah. But, but all the stuff leading up to it, the, the outfit, the carrying the flag, the whole thing, you're, uh, you're representing your country. And, um, you know, I don't want to apologize for apologizing, but you do feel like uh, you're yeah. responsible a little bit for your, for your, who you're representing, and that's everybody. It's interesting, though. I don't know if there is but, a psychological but factor. I, but I'm not. I don't. I don't want people to think that I'm really sorry. That okay. I that I feel bad that I went home and, oh, and didn't talk for five days or anything like that because I'm okay. But it's a trigger response when you feel so bad to say, "I'm sorry." So, sorry, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Well, I'm 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 sorry that you said you were sorry because yeah. I. Didn't. I'm sorry. We're sorry. And we will be back after this, I think. Or maybe we won't. Who the heck knows? Come back with Kurt Browning right after this, okay? Okay. <laughs> Stars on Ice, presented by Eaton, is touring around this country of ours, and Kurt Browning is starring in it. Um, I'm just going to give you, these are some of April's locations. What a schedule, boy. Yep, yep. Halifax, Quebec, Montreal, Toronto, Hamilton, Ottawa, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver. That all happens in London, Moncton, St. John, and Kitchener. How yeah. many shows a year? Um, probably someone like Brian Orser, and, and now I guess myself, too. I forgot for a second there. Um, <laughs> they'll do... 
hundred shows in Europe. Yeah. Brazil, Europe, Australia. That's the answer. Now that you've decided to go professional, there's a, this wonderful side of it. You decided to stay amateur for one last year so you could make, go, get to Little Hammer, and right. now... Get the t-shirt and go. Get the t-shirt, yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> I want one more of the zoo pick things and another couple of hats. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I didn't get a medal. I got lots of t-shirts. And you're off to see and the I'm, world and now. And I'm off, uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm lucky because uh, I had uh, the world championships to, uh, to get me into the, uh, a great Sun Life Stars and Ice show or, or Eat and Skate the Nation. A lot of skaters dream of being in a show like this. And, uh, and we also have a little bit of input, too. So you're not just told what to do. Oh, and you helped des design the show in your... Uh, not much. Uh, Sandra Bezik really has a lot to do with that. Okay. But basically, uh, it's kind of fun for a single skater to be on the ice with other people at the same time. Because it's lonely out there sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's kind of fun. <laughs> um, some of the great thrills of your life, and I don't know if it was meeting the Queen with your mom, was that sort of a very special moment for you? Yeah, I, I met the Queen, but I stared at my mom the whole time. She, she's um, <laughs> not, not, she doesn't like flip over for the royal family for, or anything, but she's always sort of kept in touch with them. And, your uh, mother's kept in touch with the royal family? Uh, yes. No, no, no. I, I meant she's up to date with what's oh, going on. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Middle name's Dear the whole Chuck. thing. Yeah. So when I had the opportunity to uh, to go to a function where she was there, she phoned me up and was like, "And I'm your date, right? Right. You know, if you never do anything with me again, yeah. take me to see the Queen. And uh, and I'll be darned outside on the street afterwards. We got to meet her. Oh, and see, it so was you had really fun. And Brian Mulroney was there, and it was kind of fun. Does she watch skating? Did, was she? She she was very cognizant of what was going on. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, and uh, How she, was your mom? she said, you know what she said to me? She said, you're very lucky to do something you love. I thought that was very, I thought, well, go run England or something. You're a nice lady. <laughs> How was she your was mother? Cool. Was your mother tongue-tied? Was she just thrilled? Well, she was scared because you're not supposed to talk to the queen unless she talks to you. That's right. It was one of the protocols. You know, and I yeah. wanted to introduce her, and I was like, here's my mom. But, um, <laughs> but I couldn't. But she looked at me, and I had my mom's arm here, and she looked at my mom, she looked at me, and then she smiled at my mom, gave a little bow, and mom gave a little bow. She was very cute. The uh, queen was Clint Eastwood, met the queen, and when, when asked how he felt, he said, you know, I've, I've only seen her on stamps. And he said, so when I was introduced to her, I had this overwhelming desire to lick the back of her head. <laughs> Which I thought was one of the best stories I'd ever Now, I, I know That's a whole other show, I guess, but we won't talk about that later. Which one? Licking the Queen's That's head right. or professional you know, skating? That's right. Yeah. Current affair. Of course, heaven, heaven forbid you ever meet her again. You'll start laughing. I You'll don't. get hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that at, uh, at bad moments, lost it and got the giggles when you were supposed to be straight? I mean, at awards presentations or any... No, I haven't done that, but I've, I've got a, a great ability to talk in a circle if I need to. I don't know when it'll ever come in handy. It's got me in trouble a few times. Oh, really? Or, or you'll be doing an interview and they'll ask you a question and you'll start on this really great answer and you'll find yourself and then you come back to where you started and then you finally just go, what did you ask me? I don't <laughs> yeah. know what you just said. I do that so. a lot when I'm interviewing people. What am I asking yeah. here? Where are we going <laughs> with this thing? The difficulty of uh, amateur skating and the challenge of professional skating. This. When you go into professional skating, and do you plan your life a long-term goal? Do you see now five years of this, and then I want to coach? Or I, have you got it all planned? I've only been pro for about a week. Uh, well, come on, uh, let's get with it. <laughs> but I think, I think that skating right now is really hot, and there's a lot of opportunities to um, to commentate, to do uh, competitive. Uh, com uh, pro competitions. Judges that everybody gets to hate. Yeah. Why? <laughs> that I'll never do. No? No, it's too hard. That? Judging yeah. is judging is very difficult. Yeah. What a great oh, article well, in McLean's words where they said... There we go. <laughs> well, no, no, because uh, so much of it is personal opinion and it comes down... And then it becomes that, you know, and everybody gets angry at this and they all get upset. So it really has another huge element to it, which is rather fascinating. It keeps you, keeps you going. Yeah. It keeps people talking. Um, I think, you know, the dance is so difficult because there isn't the blatant wipeouts or or the right. or the tr extra revolution in the jump or something so then even on you know i watch and i go i don't know who should have won but then it's it's so subjective because they it's let the professionals problem. come back do you think that was okay and because the next question is would you ever consider going back now that you've gone professional oh it was okay because none of them beat me yeah <laughs> <laughs> right but uh i was i was torn i was a little bit torn i, I didn't really know how it was going to affect my sport but it sure added a lot of excitement to the Olympics. I'll guarantee that. Um, Torval and Dean and, right. and Brian Botano and the whole thing. It was it was pretty exciting. And for me, as a as a amateur athlete, I was really interested with the challenge of competing against Victor and Brian again. And uh, as it turned out, you know, uh, they weren't really a part of the medal scheme at all, which surprised me. I, yeah. I, I, I thought it was going to be uh, Victor, Brian, and, and myself. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. I don't know what happened. But um, the younger guys uh, had a good short program. We didn't. And, and all of a sudden, there was like two competitions. There was 
Victor, Kurt, and Brian competing against each other in one flight, and then these young guys <coughs> doing their thing. There is no other, you know, you left out those chapters in there. You didn't talk about, uh, you know, your engagement or your, your uh, better half or... No, there's a picture. Is there a picture? Yeah, Did I miss your picture? But we're not, well, no, no, we're no. Not, what but we're not seeing each other. What's anymore, her name? So. Oh, you're not seeing each other. Well, I did take that out of the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> see that that was a hard ch no, that was a hard thing. You know, I I had a, a great girlfriend, and we're seeing each other, and and we talked about. It. I said, you know, should, should I, I put, put my relationship with... in the book? You know, who right. knows? And um, but that was my life then, and so I think it was the right thing. Ah, oh, so you're professional, and you're single, and you're available. No. Well, so we need a new picture in the book. We need a new picture in the okay, book. Okay, another That's chapter. <laughs> Boy, I hope she's working right now. Stay tuned for the revival. <laughs> it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thanks, it was fun. Continued success. I hope so. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're back with Michelle Phillips.